All right, so Gordon here from Gcreate. Uh, if you saw the last video, you'll notice that we uh, we started slicing our really cool rocket model in Simplify 3D. Uh, in this video, we're going to continue to slice. We actually had to split it into two videos, but we're going to finish up the slicing settings, and then we're going to jump straight into printing it on the Gmax 3D printer. So if you want to see, if you want to jump past the rest of the slicing and just see the printing, go ahead and click the button in the top right, and hope you stay tuned. So uh, now that we've seen kind of the, now you can actually see what I'm talking about for the dense support layers. Uh, this is actually what it affects. And, um, you know, this is also why in the new model you have to have support here because there's nothing there below. So uh, let's get out of exit preview mode here. Um, now for the rest of the settings, that's really pretty much it. Uh, again, in, in the final print, I forgot support. So make sure you turn that on. But everything else, um, if you go to uh, support. If you go to here where it says temperature, even though it says a left extruder, it's still considered uh, temperature identifier T0. So under 0 0.4, it's still considered tool zero. So those two are still, you don't have to change anything. You don't have to make a new temperature identifier or anything. So these still work fine for your left and right extruder, depending if you have a single or a dual extruder. Um, but one thing we do is, especially for acrylic, your first layer, we typically do at 201, but uh, that's because it's a nice balance between sticking and uh, being too stuck. <laughs> the higher you go with the temperature, the more your PLA will stick to acrylic. So 208 is a nice number to, if you, especially if you have small surface areas like, such as these, uh, it'll make it stick just a little bit more. If you're doing a huge print, and let's say you did 210 or 220, it might stick so much that you're going to actually pull apart parts of your acrylic off when you're trying to scrape off your print. So you, you really don't want to go too high with this, but if you're doing small surface area prints, you know, increasing this number will give you a lot more adhesion. Uh, and everything else should be set already. We have our cooling speed to be fairly high, especially for this print, because, you know, these areas here are, have such high overhangs that you want to make sure that they, uh, they cool very fast so they don't curl. Um, this is the layer number it'll start at, and that's the percentage it'll be. Uh, now our start G-code, oh, I'm sorry, that's further on, but this you shouldn't have to adjust at all. Here's the start G-code. Uh, this is set in our new config files, so that basically it'll home X and Y first, and then it'll home all axes. This is this is because you, uh, when you're using your auto probe, auto bed probing, you have to set it in this order. Uh, and then G29 is your auto bed probe. Uh, this is the second extruder offset, which is useful for if you have dual extruders. Uh, here's some acceleration settings that you don't have to worry about. If you lower this number to, let's say, 200, it'll slow down a lot when it reaches a corner, but sometimes that'll increase your print time by several hours. And if you go too high, you'll get a lot of kind of uh, echoing on your model. Um, and then the rest of it, pretty much, uh, this is just so that it'll, what it'll T or M104 T0 and then M104 T1. These will set your first layer temperatures but not wait for them to reach temperature before going to the next command. And then what it'll do is go ahead and set your first layer temperature and wait for it to reach temp. So the kind of work, the reason we set this up is that basically it'll set your first layer to be, let's say 200 degrees, 200 degrees, degrees for the second extruder, and then go ahead and wait to reach 200 degrees. Uh, this is very useful because for dual extruders especially, um, what it was doing was setting extruder 1 to a certain temperature and then waiting for it to reach that and then going to extruder 2 and waiting another 10 minutes for it to reach that. It was just a night, or not 10 minutes, but another minute for it to reach that. So it was kind of a nightmare and it was very slow and really long startup times to just start one print. So anyway, so this is a workaround. So just follow what's, <laughs> what's in our, our files. Um, aside from that, this, this code down here will actually... Um, tell you what layer you're on and the layer height. For the speeds, you want default printing speed will be 80 millimeters a second is a good default speed. And then the outline speed is the outermost perimeter, 40% of 80. Uh, that's a pretty good number because you can get really fast infills and really fast interior perimeters and then slow down the exterior, which is what you see. So if you want to make your improve your model quality and your, your final print quality, lower this even more to like 30. But we kept it at 40. I think that put us at like... Eight, eight hours or something like that when we were done. And everything else is pretty much set. So go ahead and hit OK. Prepare to print. Uh, as with any file that you want to slice and print, always look at your G-code because it's worth the extra five seconds and even 
20 seconds of reviewing your g-code to see if there's problems instead of wasting all that plastic and all that time printing it so take your g-code and scroll through every layer to see what's going on you know i i didn't do that i i jumped the gun and i threw this print on and printed it with the uh time lapse the other day and i forgot the support here so you know what it, it was it was not worth the time the extra five seconds to just look at the model so start at the bottom and work your way up and just kind of slowly you can also hit play pause and just watch the model go up look for problem areas look for holes look for gaps sometimes you'll see just splits in the layers i mean there's all things that come up so it's worth spending your time to look at it to make sure that everything prints that looks well before you print um, and then especially or especially if you're doing let's say 10 of these if you spend the time to make sure one works well the other nine will be perfect so just look at that first but so yeah, so now we're ready to go ahead and uh, we're going to put this on our SD card. So you hit save toolpath to disk. And then in this example, um, you know, we have it sa we're saving it to a, uh, a USB card or uh, SD card. So go ahead and save it wherever you want with whatever number or name you want. I typically, as I mentioned in previous videos, I like to put the nozzle height. So on the nozzle size here and then the percentage that the size of the print, because sometimes we'll print with a 0.5 nozzle, sometimes we'll print with a 0.4, uh, sometimes we'll print the model at 200%, 300%. So this is a really quick way for you to keep track of your own stuff to say, look, I did it at this nozzle height or size, this uh, percentage, this layer height, whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, so go ahead and save that. And then uh, you, you won't know it's done until on the bottom here, it says, uh, uh, what does it say, exported to SD card or something so if it doesn't say that it's not done yet because this is about a 30 meg file so wait until that's done before ejecting your SD card and going ahead and printing it so once this is done we're gonna go ahead and print it and here it says right here tool pass successfully exported so now we're gonna go ahead uh, take the SD card put it in the printer and start the print and hopefully enjoy that Okay, so now what we want to do first is, uh, especially if you're using acrylic, the acrylic bed, uh, is sand down that acrylic with the supplied sponge uh, sanding block. Uh, make sure to wet it down first so the uh, acrylic dust doesn't, doesn't get in the air. But uh, spend a good 15, 20 seconds just make sure the first layer is nice and sanded and smooth. And this will ensure that the first layer not only looks really nice, but uh, sticks really well. So you should do this every 5 to 10 prints, uh, sometimes less, depending on your printing uh, quality and what you're doing. But... Um, yeah, make sure when you're done, you wipe it down with a paper towel, get all the uh, the acrylic dust off, and this will set up the perfect first layer for your for your print. All right, so once you're done uh, sanding the bed, go ahead and take the SD card from before and uh, stick it into the side of the printer and push it all the way in. And then you should see um, SD card or it says card inserted. So go to print from SD card, pick your file, and then you'll see the printer go to the left. The x-axis will home. The bed y-axis will home. And then you'll see the z-axis bed probe will now drop down and touch the bed. And then here it is touching the bed. As soon as it does that, then it'll go ahead and start probing all the points in the bed to do the auto bed leveling. So just sit back for a minute and go ahead and let it finish that. Obviously, if we cut it so you can now see it, it's finished the bed pro uh, probing, and now it's just heating to the target temperature of 208. Once it reaches that 208 temperature, then it'll start printing the first layer, uh, which you kind of see here. What we do quickly is go to the Tune menu and then the Baby Step Z function. And this will allow you to raise or lower your first layer by tiny increments just to get it just right. So if you ever find that your first layer is a little bit off, go ahead and go to Tune and the Baby Step Z and turn it up or down, sometimes a lot or a little, depending on how off you are, and that'll just fine tune that first layer. And here you see it printing all of the uh, individual little uh, brims, uh, or skirts, I think we did. Um, you'll notice that some of the, the slag there on the, or the kind of dragging on the bed, this was the V6, or the E3D V6 light we were testing out. So you'll see in the uh, time lapse, we actually used the E3D V6 regular, which had no problems at all. So here we'll go ahead and let it finish that kind of first layer. It's filling in the first, uh, the first layer uh, solid portions. So at this point, we have a time lapse from a different printer, but we hope you do sit back and enjoy watching it.
there it is, the uh, completed G-Create rocket. Uh, we wanted to mention first right here, you'll see that we actually used Hatchbox PLA. Uh, very great quality. We're very happy with it, and uh, it's, it's a really good price. So uh, you'll see in the final model uh, what that looks like. But uh, here's, the, here's the model itself. It came out great, nice and solid, no layer problems. And here we have a close-up. As I said, the layers, they printed perfectly together, uh, nice and solid. They're very, it's very solid material. The logos come out great. Um, you can see here that uh, this is the bottom that I, uh, I mentioned earlier that um, unfortunately I forgot to put support material in for the time lapse, but you know, it happens. And um, a few changes in the model, like the flat spots there uh, and the logos and everything. Everything prints really nice. You know, we try to make it easier to print, um, and especially being hollow, you'll use a lot less plastic. So, and as we mentioned, it's a coin bank. So <laughs> the coins fit in perfectly in the top here. And um, the top, top opening is just big enough at 100% so you can pour out quarters and fit them in there. So if you print on a smaller scale, keep that in mind. And, and you'll notice, too, that when you print the nose cone on top, which we didn't show, um, you have to print this very slow because it's, it's such a small surface area. And then you see there the um, kind of locking mechanism for the top cone there. But uh, now it's, a, it's locked, locked tight. And you can go ahead and put your quarters in, slip them in there. <laughs> they fit great. And um, yeah, we're really happy with the outcome of this. So hopefully you'll check out the model. Hopefully you enjoyed this uh, the series so far. And uh, yeah, download the model and check it out. So at this point, we're done with the, <laughs> the designing, slicing, and printing of the G-Create new um, Money Bank rocket. So <laughs> go to Thingiverse, go to Cult 3D, download it. Hopefully you can print one for yourself. Now we have one more video for you where we took this rocket are actually one similar to this, uh, which is actually a spiral vase mode rocket. So it's a third rocket in our series. We took that rocket and we printed it at a massive size. So check out the next video up here. And thanks to Joel Telling from the 3D Printing Nerd for his uh, <laughs> inspiration to GMAX size.